Hi everyone, we are here at Data Plus AI Summit uh, by Databricks. Super excited to be with uh, Chris Brown from Immuta. Chris, uh, not a new face to The Robert Show. Such a pleasure to host you again on The Robert Show. I know we, we met uh, maybe at Gartner Orlando a few years back. Yeah, a couple of years back. I think this is my third or fourth time here, so I'm excited to be back with you. Fantastic. Uh, just for audience, would you like to quickly tell us about what do you do at Immuta, and then we can talk about the government world as well. Yeah, so uh, Chris Brown, public sector CTO at Immuta. So I support our customers from a post-sales and uh, pre-sales perspective, work very closely with our um, product team to bring all those demands of our customers into fantastic. the product to be developed. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, and uh, we've seen the great work that you've done in the space as well, Chris. So uh, congratulations on that. I'm kind of curious and I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, uh, when we talk about government, obviously there are a lot of compliance that kind of comes into the place. Uh, there are a lot of privacy things that they kind of take care and are very serious about. Uh, now, how can agencies enable secure AI access to sensitive data without compromising clearances or compliances? How does that work? Yeah, so that's been one of the most exciting things that's happened uh, within the public sector within I would almost say the last six months is just the advancement of AI and people wanting to utilize AI to be more efficient in how they're actually doing their work these days and provide better services obviously for citizens. And so with that, um, what is happening, especially with agentic AI, is that it's really opening up data to more people. No longer do people have to actually know how to write a SQL statement, what tables to query and things of that nature. They're starting to actually ask questions of AI agents. Right. That are transforming that into uh, the SQL to bring back the answers. Yep. And so now it's becoming even more important to be able to make sure that not only human actors, but non-human actors are being secured and right. not just gaining unfettered access to the data, that you're able to give them the right uh, access to the right tables, yeah. but also the right kind of columns and, and rows within those tables today too. Yeah, fantastic. Those are great insights and thanks for sharing uh, a little bit in a uh, sneak peek, giving us a sneak peek into <laughs> how it all kind of works. I'm also wanting to know when it comes to, you know, uh, speeding up the data access, how do you speed up the data access for AI? Uh, in government without breaking procurement or security protocols, how does that work? Yeah, so I mean, that's the great thing about Immuta is that we make it really simple for people to actually do those data protections. So right. we do true attribute-based access control with both data, attributes about data, attribute about users, and those users, again, can be those uh, agents, those non-human mm -hmm. actors. Yeah. And then we simplify how people can actually give access and give power back to those data stewards through simple, just plain English types of policies and we're able to translate that down into the mechanisms for all the platforms that we support. Yep. And this makes it very easy for people to be able to write the rules, make sure they're implemented, and federate that out to the people who actually know the data. Very because one of the biggest problems yeah. that we have today is that access to data goes through a bunch of tickets, yep. like ServiceNow, um, other types of ITSM tools, like great tools for ITSM, yeah. not great tools for giving access to data. And we've seen with our customers that yep you know, they're taking two, three months to get access to that data. So that becomes a definitely a big challenge when it kind of comes to that route yeah. where they have like a little bit uh, delay in the tickets, right? Uh, exactly. Uh, Chris, also uh, just a follow-up question here, with complex environments like uh, interagency data and, you know, the contractor access, how do you automate data provisioning uh, effectively and how does that process kind of works? Yeah, so I mean, obviously within the federal government, uh, each agency does a very unique thing. And yep. for people to actually really complete their mission sometimes, they need to be able to get information from other agencies. Yep. So being able to be able to effectively uh, share out that data, make sure that customers aren't seeing data they're not supposed to. Like for right now, one of our customers is General Services Agency. Yep. So they manage most of the contracts within uh, the civilian world at least. Yep. And so it comes that use exact use case, making sure that some of those big contractors like the Accentures and the Booz Allens and the others that are work there, plus all the smaller ones, um, we're able to actually build out those policies to make sure when they're querying into that data that they've been marked as a Booz Allen employee, oh, and so yeah. they can only see the Booz Allen contracts, the Booz Allen information. Which, which is the is, best thing. Yeah, yeah, right, and it's important for those guys too, yeah. because uh, if they see information in a contract that they're not supposed to, then they'll be um, what they call OCI'd out of other contracts. Exactly. And they have an unfair advantage because maybe they see pricing and things of that yeah, nature, exactly. right? Yeah, And it all comes back to building out those very simple controls, mm. getting people out of those ticketing systems, that's been one of the other yeah. great things. 
um, with Amuta yep. is that we have started to build out the user interface for mm -hmm. people to request data to data products yep. and go through the data stewards. Um, and once the data steward says, yes, you're approved, mm. we actually do that and implement and provision that data to the user rather than, again, in those ticketing systems, it ends up being get a DBA involved, mm. write the um, provisioning, and give it to the user, delaying that access. Very important process yep. that you guys follow, and it is very important where the privacy and security kind of protocols are maintained and are very much in place. So exactly. that's fantastic, Chris. Also, uh, another follow-up question. So what's like the path uh, from manual approvals to intelligence, zero trust, uh, data access in mission-critical settings? How does that kind of operate? Uh, can you share a little yeah, bit? So so what's another exciting thing about Amuta right now is we're starting to put in uh, you know, AI into our product right. so that we can actually start looking at who's getting approved, um, is it risky for people to be mm. approved, and provide that information out to the data stewards who are doing all this approval to make sure that the right people really are getting access. So making sure that even, um, and even things like suggesting out uh, new policies because they keep um, approving the same types of people, right? Um, one of the big problems that we see is that these data stewards going in is just saying approve, 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 because <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm, I'm tired right. of this, which is useless because they're not <laughs> they're not actually looking at any of the yeah, information. Exactly. And so now we're able to say, hey, you've been doing this a lot, mm. so maybe write this policy so you don't oh, ever wow. have to worry about this stuff again. And that's about scaling out those data governors and providing them the information to be able to say, hey, should I actually make this approval by giving a risk score to it? Yep. But also providing out the policies, like suggestions, hey, you've been doing this a lot, so maybe you should actually write this policy so you yep. don't have to worry about it again. Yeah, I love it. I love how you all have kind of, you know, obviously helped the manual task to, you know, just be a little lesser in the game yes. uh, and just uh, be more productive when yeah, you're kind of exactly. doing that. Uh, Chris, one last question for you is about a little bit about the future. How do you see, we are in that AI world where things are kind of moving so fast <laughs> oh, every yeah. day, right? Uh, how do you see things kind of moving in the space where you're working with the public sector in the next three to six months? I'm not even going to ask yeah, you I mean, more than a year, right? <laughs> I mean, Yeah, I mean, I, I think even the last time like we talked was maybe a year ago or something ago, like right. that. And so many things have changed since then, especially uh, agentic AI right. has been just a massive game changer, um, both for us because we need to protect the data, but also for us to be able to do those things like suggesting out the policies, being able to say, hey, is this a risky type of thing? Um, and also giving people new ways to interact with, yep. the with our application. Mm. So uh, we have a demo to where we've created an MCP server to where Data Steward can now have a conversation through Claude mm. and actually say, hey, show me all the uh, requests I need to approve. It gives the approvals. So easy. Say, hey, approve them. these yeah. guys. And then, hey, what's the risk score for these people? Yeah. Why should I approve or not approve this person? And what we're seeing is that we're obviously using it, but all of our customers are starting to use it to be able to gain access and information about their systems. Yeah. Um, gain new insights into their data, um, especially you know things around summarization of data is, is so important. Um, and one of the things I think is really exciting is what we're really starting to see around kind of those uh, AI-based dashboards mm. to where not only are we able to do the text to SQL, text to, SQL to yep. the LLM, but now the LLM can also build out the dashboard for you. You can start sharing it out and things like that, which I think is a lot of the stuff you're starting to see at like the Databricks Summit here, yep, some exactly. things that they've announced. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're going to see more of that just going forward. Love and it. AI just being more part of what people do on a daily basis. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing that and uh, thanks for giving us a deeper dive into how the public sector kind of operates. Uh, it's always such a pleasure chatting with you, Chris. Uh, we'll keep the conversation going, but uh, one last question, I promise. Yeah. If, no, it's people, okay. if people want to reach out to you, yeah. how can they do that? LinkedIn? Which yeah, is best, best place place to reach me is uh, Chris Brown on LinkedIn. Um, obviously, look for Chris Brown at Amuta because you could find 50 million of us out there. <laughs> Unfortunately, my name is not um, super uncommon. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, if you look at Chris Brown for Amuta, you will find me on LinkedIn, and that's the best place to get in touch. Fantastic. Chris, such a pleasure. We'll keep the conversation going. See you very soon at maybe some next yes. conference. Yeah, next conference, obviously. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, Thanks. for joining us today.